10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 427. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 427 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. So last week I introduced this tune, Are You Lonesome Tonight? We talked about how this is, in my mind, one of the most perfect jazz standards because it does what jazz standards do a lot of the time and it takes from a tradition of other music and adapts to jazz. I mean, think about all of the jazz standards that were taken from things like Broadway shows and sort of like adapted to this format of playing jazz. So we're taking this tune from a completely different tradition and we're putting it into our tradition and kind of making it ours through playing it in a different style and improvising over the top of it. So really exciting stuff, I think. You know, something as simple as this, as as taking a tune that's not traditionally played as jazz and and playing it in a jazz style is just really exciting to me, at least. But then again, I'm a big jazz nerd, so maybe you don't get as excited about it <laughs> as I do. But I think it's really cool. All right, so last week I had you learn the melody by ear. Uh, we did some trading singing-wise. And that should have been really fun for you. And this week, we're going to go over the chord changes. They're actually really, really simple. And then I have a little bit of an assignment for you. But if you are a Patreon member, go and grab the PDF right now because we're going to go over the chord layout, do a little bit of analysis, and kind of go through it with piano so that we can hear all the different chord movements. So again, this is a 32 bar tune. Uh, the form is actually A, B, C, D. So this is an interesting one because it's not like, you know, A, B, or A, A, B, A, or A, B, A, B, or any of those things that have these like repeated sections that we hear over and over again. And therefore it makes it a little bit easier because we know like, oh, the second eight bars is just exactly the same as the first eight bars. But I promise you that this one is like not that complicated. Um, so don't worry about it. It's not like we're in for a million different chords and the form makes a ton of sense. So if we look at the A section, let's go over that first. Now we have a pretty simple beginning. It's concert B flat. And you'll notice that I didn't write any more information than that. Right? Like I didn't put B flat major seven or B flat six. I would much rather leave that up to you. All right. And you can kind of treat it in your own way. Could be a B flat six chord, could be B flat major seven, depends on who you're playing with, how you want it to sound, all that kind of stuff. So I just put B flat, and that was for an actual reason. So what we get is we actually get five bars of just a plain old B flat sound. And then in bar six, we get this G7 chord. Now in jazz shorthand, we might call that a six chord, but really what it is, if we look at the next chord, we have C minor. And again, that's just a plain old C minor chord. So we could treat that in a lot of different ways. We could play that. We could play that. We could play that. I'm going to leave that up to you a little bit. Okay. So now instead of seeing this G7 and saying it's six, what we know is it's really a five of two. So the, the whole reason that the G7 chord is there is to lead us to that C minor chord. So our first eight bar sounds like this. Okay. All right. And then the second eight bars, the B section, 
what we see is we have an F7 chord for four bars, which is just a five chord in the key of B flat. And then simply in the fifth bar, we have a two and then five. And then we go back to one. Right, so that one's really simple, but we hang out on that five chord for a really long time, four entire bars. And that's the first thing I want you to look at this week. What do you do over a five chord that lasts for four entire bars? We're so used to a five chord lasting for like one bar, maybe even sometimes only two beats. But in this instance, we actually have it for four entire bars. So you may want to like make a little star next to that on your sheet. And I want you to really focus in on that in your solo, because that can be a really tricky thing for somebody to do. It's in the same key, obviously, as the one chord, right? It shares that key signature. But actually playing over it, that could use some extra attention uh, to develop some vocabulary and a, a way to play over an extended five chord like that. Okay, so now in the C section, what we see is we see our one chord turn into a dominant chord. So our B-flat major chord becomes B-flat 7, and what this should signal in your mind is that we're going somewhere else, right? Because typically, when we have this dominant chord, especially if it's a new one, right, where our major chord turns into dominant, we probably want to start thinking, oh, this is going to go somewhere else. And in fact, it does. The B-flat 7 chord becomes the 5 of... E flat major, which is the four. So what we would think at the beginning, if we were analyzing this Roman numeral wise, when we get to the beginning of that C section, we have five of four resolving to four. And then in the fifth bar of the C section, we have a C7 chord. So what that is, is it's five of five, and then it goes to the five. So our C section sounds like this. Now we're on to the D section. Now, that section is so typical in jazz, you absolutely should zoom in on the sound of what happens there. Because that chord progression, five of four to four to five of five to five, is probably found in, I don't know, upwards of a couple of hundred jazz tunes. So that would be like a really good thing to be able to hear and recognize. Because when you inevitably hear that a couple hundred times in your life as a jazz musician, you won't even have to question what it is. You'll just know what that sound is. So going from one, this is the end of the B section, to five of four, four, five of five, five, back to one. Really learn to hear that. Sit down at the piano and actually play that with just shell voicings or, you know, one finger on each hand, root and third, whatever it might be, it's going to be hugely advantageous for you to know the sound of that. Okay? All right. And then the D section, we have one chord for two bars. And then we go up to five of five. Two, five. Two, one. Very simple. Again, one, five of five, five, one. Another sound that should be really, really familiar to your ears, hugely advantageous to be able to hear all that stuff. All right, so what do I want you to do this week? Well, I kind of already said it, 
as we were going through. The two things that you should really, really, really be focusing on, and you can use the backing track that I'm going to provide to you, um, or again, you can sit down at the piano and work on this stuff. But the first one is going to be playing over that extended five chord at the beginning of the B section and measure nine of the tune. Really start to figure out how to play something meaningful over four bars of the five chord going into that two, five, one. And then the second one's a little bit like less actionable, but I want you to really work on being able to hear that C section, the five of five, four, five of, I'm sorry, five of four, four, five of five, five, back to one, okay? There's probably a couple of you out there that will recognize that the changes to this tune are like extremely, extremely close to the changes to a couple of other really classic jazz standards. You might be able to hear that already. In fact, you might be able to hear some other melodies happening over the top of this that just about fit with a few exceptions here and there. So that's your assignment. Uh, you'll have the changes if you're a Patreon member. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say Patreon member, um, that's the way that we keep the show going. We don't have any advertisements on the show. Instead, we rely on the support of listeners just like you to keep the podcast going in the form of a tiny monthly donation. And in return for that, you get all sorts of cool stuff like PDFs and backing tracks and uh, trading tracks and all this kind of stuff. So if you want more information about that and you want to get your hands on this, the materials from this episode and every single other episode that we've ever done, uh, go over to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, or you can go to patreon.com and you can search for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson podcast. You can get all the info and sign up to become a supporter today. Shout out to some new supporters. Thank you to Arimas, Carmin, John, Yannick, another John, and Adla. I hope that I'm pronouncing all those right. You guys know I'm terrible at pronouncing names. But thank you so much for signing up to become members. Really appreciate it. And to the over 350 people that we have over there supporting us, thanks. Uh, this podcast would not be happening without your support. All right, let's close out the episode with me playing the entire progression through on piano, and then we'll say goodbye, and we'll see you next week. One, two, I want two, three, four. <laughs>